Hello, we're glad you've joined us for this live webinar, Measuring Cortisol in Clinical Settings, Pitfalls, Challenges, and Promises. I am Judy O'Rourke of LabRoots, and I'll be moderating this session. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots, the leading scientific social networking website and provider of virtual events and webinars advancing scientific collaboration, and is made possible by an open educational grant from Agilent Technologies. Agilent Technologies has had no input in the selection of speakers, content, or mode of presentation. Let's get started. You can pose questions to the speaker during the presentation while they're fresh in your mind. To do so, simply type them into the drop-down box located on the far left of your screen, labeled Ask a Question, and click on the Send button. Questions will be answered after the presentation. To enlarge the slide window, click on the arrows at the top right-hand corner of the presentation window. If you experience technical problems seeing or hearing the presentation, just click on the Support tab found at the top right of the presentation window or report your problem by typing it into the Answer a Question box located on the far left of your screen. This is an educational webinar and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located at the top right of the presentation window and follow the process of obtaining your credits. I now present today's speaker, Li Sheng Chen, PhD. Dr. Chen has more than 10 years of experience directing and managing clinical laboratories in the academic center, industry, and in government regulatory agencies. Most recently, she served as the Division Director of Chemistry and Toxicology for the Bureau of Laboratories within Michigan's state government. Previously, she served as Associate Director of the Automated Laboratory at the University of Rochester Medical Center, as a staff fellow at the FDA, and as Laboratory Director for Firefly Diagnostics, a startup. Dr. Chen obtained a PhD in nutritional biochemistry from the University of California at Berkeley and completed two postdoctoral fellowships at the University of California Davis and Mayo Clinic, respectively. Her complete bio is found on the LabRoots website. Dr. Chen will now begin her presentation. Thank you very much by Judy's kind introduction. There are three learning objectives for my today's presentation. So after uh, completing this uh, webinar, you will be able to first describe the different specimen types and their clinical utilities for cortisol management. Secondly, you will be able to describe the methodologies and the assay performances of current cortisol immunoassays and LC tender mass spec methods for cortisol measurement in the clinical laboratories. You will also be able to know the recent advances and the current status in the development of two major types of cortisol point of care devices, cortisol biosensors and the miniature mass spectrometry system. Cortisol is the major form of glucocorticoids and is released in response to stress and fasting. It controls energy metabolism with the net effect of increasing blood glucose levels. Cortisol has both anti-inflammatory and immune-suppressive effects. Cortisol also involved in water and electrolyte balance, as well as controlling blood pressure through its binding to mineral corticoids receptor. Therefore, cortisol overproduction or deficiency can significantly affect our health and well-being. Measuring cortisol is essential for the investigation of conditions uh, leading to adrenal insufficiency and cortisol access, especially for Addison's disease and Cushing's syndrome. Both diseases are, have non-specific uh, symptoms and therefore relies on appropriate cortisol, test, uh, cortisol testing in order to prevent the delays of diagnosis. The dynamic function testing, including ACTH stimulation and dexamethasone suppression tests, are most useful for assessing adrenal function and give definitive diagnosis of related disorders. Measuring cortisol is also useful in guiding proper dosing of metarapone, which is a medication used to treat Cushing's syndrome. 
cortisol secretion follows circadian uh, rhythm with the highest peak appears in the early morning and the lowest trough around midnight. Uh, the testing result from these two time points is most informative in diagnosis of cortisol-related uh, diseases. For example, in patients with severe cushions, their circadian reason is lost and therefore the cortisol level constantly remains high. Only 10% of the circulating cortisol is in free bioactive form, while 80% of them bind to cortisol binding globulin CBG, and the rest of 10% is albumin bound. The alteration of the, uh, of the alteration of the CBG and albumin will lead to the uh, will lead to the change of circulating serum cortisols and therefore uh, may lead to inappropriate clinical diagnosis. Unlike serum albumin, the majority of the urinary and salivary cortisol are free and unbound. Urinary cortisol is unaffected by hepatic metabolism. Therefore, 24-hour urinary free cortisol correlate well with serum free cortisol and, and even in the patient with cortisol access. Therefore, uh, its measurement is informative in the initial diagnosis of cushions. Cortisol enters saliva through diffusion and is independent of saliva f flowing rate. Salivary cortisol responds well to change in plasma cortisol quickly and reliably. Therefore, late night salivary cortisol is now recommended as the first line screening test for cushion syndrome. However, uh, salivary cortisol is present in a much less concentration compared to serum cortisol and therefore can only be reliably measured by the more sensitive LC tendon mass spec methods. Cortisol measurement is, has a long history in clinical laboratories. The first immunoassay, uh, automated immunoassay for cortisol was described in 1992. And since then, uh, the commercially available cortisol immunoassays have been and is still now the most commonly used method for cortisol measurement in clinical laboratory. But most, all, most all of them, uh, to varying degrees cross-react with other steroid metabolites. Chemical structure of cortisol is shown at the top of this figure. It shares similar uh, structural similarity with many exogenous and endogenous uh, steroid molecules. For example, the commonly prescribed prednisolone, as shown in the bottom left, has known to be cross-react with 30% of the commonly used cortisol immunoassays. Moreover, the upstream uh, precursors, uh, progesterone and 11-deoxycortisol, when present in high concentration, have been reported to affect the cortisol uh, measurement by immunoassays and uh, affected patient care. Immunoassays are not created equal. There exists great interassay variability. The lack of a single reference material as well as the lack of uh, a single reference measurement method is the major factor accounting for the observed interassay variability. Furthermore, there is ongoing assay change even from the assays uh, made by a single vendor. For example, as shown in the table on the right, Siemens Centaur's cortisol assay has exhibited a apparent uh, performance change over a three-year period from 2010 to 2013, uh, despite there is no major change of assay formula. Moreover, sample matrix effect accounts for the observed increase in inter assay variability observed in the critical year patients and uh, for those patients with severe renal diseases. 
recent study has revealed that cortisol assay variability has impacted the interpretation of ACTH stimulation tests used for the differential diagnosis of adrenal insufficiency. A single cutoff value of 550 nanomolar uh, derived from a historic uh, studies have been used for all the clinical cortisol immunoassays for interpreting ACTH stimulation tests. However, in a recent study, the responses of uh, cortisol after the ACTH stimulation was measured by five contemporary, contemporary immunoassays as shown in the table here and exhibit apparent differences when compared to GCMS methods, uh, especially in a group of females taking oral contraceptive as shown in the right-hand column. Therefore, the continuing, continuing use of this single cutoff uh, may lead, lead to misdiagnosis of adrenal insufficiency. It should be replaced by validated assay specific cutoffs. The serial measurement of serum cortisol is also used to optimizing the dosing regimen for treating cushions with metyropon which blocks the conversion of 11 deoxycortisol to cortisol, as shown in the left-hand panel, and resulted in tenfold increase of this precursor. The elevation of deoxycortisol uh, is known to interfere with all the cortisol immunoassays, and therefore uh, inflated the cortisol measurement by this method, as shown in the figure on the right when compared with the cortisol measurement with LC tendon mass spec method. Consequentially, this may trigger inappropriate dose escalation and cause harm in patients. Mass spectrometric method offer the much needed specificity and sensitivity for cortisol measurement. The first GCMS reference method was described in 1975, but it is not until uh, the maturation of several key technologies that the high throughput rapid analysis of biomolecules by LC tendon mass spec became available and found its way into clinical laboratories in late 90s. The first profiling of cortisol ster steroids by tender mass back method and the first high throughput non derivatized LC MSMS method for urinary cortisol measurement were all reported in early 2000s. This was followed by the development of many more LC MSMS methods specific for uh, target sample types by optimizing the ASA uh, parameters, including sample prep, mobile phase uh, composition, chromatographic separation, and the MSMS transition ions. Now I am going to quickly walk you through the specific parameters for LC-MSMS cortisol assays. The initial sample extraction by ways of protein precipitation, liquid-liquid extraction, or solid phase extraction is aimed at removing proteins and other interfering substances, which may uh, affect the cortisol ionization efficiency. Protein precipitation is simple, rapid, amenable to automate, uh, automation, and uh, relatively inexpensive, and therefore is the method of choice by many LC tendon mass spec methods used in clinical laboratories. Equilibrium dialysis, gel filtration, and ultrafiltration are methods available for separating serum free cortisol from protein bound fraction. However, these methods are all time consuming and uh, um, tedious, therefore add uh, assay variability to the method. As a consequence, there is no single robust reference range for serum free cortisol. 
Mongol face. Methanol is the preferred solvent because it promotes iron formation. However, when mixed with uh, water, methanol increases its viscosity and causes high column back pressure. Acetyl nitrile has lower viscosity, can be used instead, but it is more expensive. It is also known that cortisol uh, ionization can be enhanced by the use of buffer systems such as ammonium chloride, ammonium acetate, and the formic acid. By virtue of its hydrophobicity and steric nature, uh, cortisol are most commonly separated from its structural analogs by C18 columns. Several commercially available uh, C18 columns differing in their end capping, carbon loading capacity, and the ligand surface area coverage have been successfully used for separating cortisol, but may account for varying performances. C5 has a shorter carbon chain and therefore uh, allows shorter run time. ESI electrospray ionization, APCI atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, and recently atmospheric pressure photo ionization, APPI, have all been successfully used for ionizing cortisol and achieve detection of quantitation below all clinical requirements. Um, most of the LC-MS-MS methods used in the clinical laboratory are ESI-based, although APCI and APPI are more efficient in ionizing nonpolar compounds such as uh, cortisol. Transition ions used for detect, uh, detect cortisol are similar across methods. Most of the LC tender mass spec method for cortisol monitor NC363-121 transition, which is the most sensitive ion pair. However, it is interfered by the presence of a high concentration of prednisolone and its metabolite. Alternatively, monitoring NC transitions 363-267 or NC363-367 are more selective but less sensitive. This table summarizes the uh, representative LC tender mass spec method for quantitating serum cortisol. Most of methods is operating in the positive mode. Few methods use ESI in negative mo mode reported enhanced the signal to noise ratio. Also, uh, several methods listed here were developed for steroid profiling by, multi uh, by monitoring multiple steroid metabolites. These type of methods typically need longer runtime in order to adequately uh, separate the monitored uh, steroid metabolites. Many LC tendon mass spec methods are also developed for measuring urinary cortisol. The loot and shoot method with simple, uh, simple prep step and the rapid turnaround time was initially explored. However, introducing uh, relatively dirty samples into the analytical system greatly reduced column lifespans and require more, sample, uh, more instrument cleanup and the services. In an alternative, uh, in an alternative way, the samples are first introduced into a turbo flow chromatographic system uh, and the uh, turbulent solvent flows through a short porous column where the small molecules were separated from protein. The latter was then size excluded and discarded. After the separation, the analytical column C18 or C8 can be used before MS-MS analysis. Monolith, monolithic column with its porous rod system allows high flow rate and therefore can be used to develop more rapid methods. 
In addition, monitoring cortisol and its urinary metabolite and then observe the specific metabolites ratio, such as cortisol to cortisone ratio or the ratio between tetrahydrometabolites of cortisol are known to be effective in diagnosis of related disorders for steroid synthesis and metabolism. Saliva as a matrix contains pure interfering compound. Its non-invasive and cost-effective collection is appealing to both patient and physicians. However, saliva contains much higher concentration of cortisone. Therefore, uh, measuring cortisol and cortisone concurrently using tandem aspect methods uh, can facilitate the test interpretation. An unexpected high ratio of cortisol to cortisone, for example, indicates oral hydrocortisone contamination. Since assay sensitivity is crucial for measuring salivary cortisol, a simple prep step which purify and concentrate saliva is beneficial. And almost all the tandem aspect methods for salivary cortisol monitor the most sensitive NZ, 363-121. Because tandem aspect methods are mostly homebrewed, there exist, uh, there do exist assay specific variations. Therefore, there is no common reference range and disease specific cutoff values remain to be established. Now, let me quickly summarize what we have covered so far. First, serum total cortisol results can be misleading in patients with altered CBGO or binning concentrations. Second, 24-hour urine pre-cortisol and late-night salivary cortisol are recommended for screening Cushing's syndrome. Third, cortisol measurement by immunoassay due to its uh, problems of interference and a great interassay variability may lead to improper dosing of metyropon and incorrect interpretation of ACTH stimulation test. Therefore, endocrine uh, society have recommended to use LC tandem mass spec uh, method to replace immunoassay in these two conditions. Lastly, metric specific LC MSMS method provide superior sensitivity and specificity. However, assay standardization is poor and the validation of reference ranges and the cutoff values of dynamic testings remain to be done. In the second part of my presentation, uh, we will discuss cortisol analysis at point of care. Point of care POC devices are portable, easy to use devices which can provide rapid results outside the traditional clinical settings. Uh, there are two major types of uh, POC devices. The first type is a handheld device with miniature detection system and disposable cartridges for sample concentration and separation. The second type are benchtop analyzers similar to the ones used in the central laboratories but are smaller and less complex. Well, why do we need point of care a cortisol testing. First, cortisol spikes 15 minutes after the onset of a stressor, therefore are used as biomarker uh, of stress adaptation in response to environmental and the behavioral triggers controlled by the H uh, HPA axis. Secondly, secondly, in clinical settings, Timely result is also essential for intra-procedural cortisol monitoring for adrenal vent sampling. Adrenal vent sampling is the gold standard procedures used for distinguishing between the uh, surgically curable unilateral 
uh, unilateral adastrum producing adenoma from the medication responsive bilateral idiopathic hypoadastronism. As shown in the figure on the left, adrenal vein sampling use image guided catheterization to obtain blood samples from both right and left adrenal vein as well as inferior venal cava as indicated by the red and purple arrows in the figure. Uh, then the cortisol, uh, then the ratio of cortisol level uh, in, the, in each adrenal vein versus the level in inferior venal cava was first used to determine the success of the procedure. Subsequently, the ratio of cortisol normalized adastron level uh, between right and left uh, adrenal vent, known as lateral index, is used to determine the type of primary hyperadastronism and the subsequent appropriate treatment modality. Rapid cortisol uh, assays were developed to operate on the tabletop analyzers, such as the one shown in the uh, figure on the left, which can be used in the, or near the radiation suite. However, operator competency and the instrument maintenance are problematic. Recently, a quick, easy to use uh, lateral flow assay has been developed for this purpose, but the visual color reading uh, only provides a semi-quantitative result. Therefore, both type of method POC uh, methods are not widely used. Rushing samples to the central laboratory for testing is still the standard practice for adrenal band sampling. Cortisol biosensors were initially develop developed for the field investigation of cortisol as a stress biomarker, but recent technical advances uh, in this field has greatly improved uh, uh, by the ability of these biosensors for accurately quantitating cortisol with the great potential to translate into the clinical use at POC settings. Here, we are going to uh, discuss three types of novel cortisol biosensors. They are lateral flow assay-based smartphone system, anti-cortisol, antibody-based immunosensors, and the aptamer-based cortisol biosensors. Lateral flow immunoassay, LFA, uh, is the most common used POC format with easy to use, fast and uh, low cost features, but lack the specificity and sensitivity of the clinical laboratory used cortisol assays. Recently, lateral flow immunoassay was integrated into smartphone system and tapping its CCD camera and optical arrays as photo detectors to create a new category of POC devices. Um, an example of such innovation is IKLQ, as shown in the figure A mm, of, in the upper left, which consists of a smartphone, a test reading biosensors, a disposable LFA uh, test cassette, and a mobile app for test interpretation. Light scattering was used as the detection modality, which was uh, optimal, empirically optimized during R&D stage so that the desired uh, light scattering from gold nanoparticles has been greatly improved. Uh, this device claims a limit of detection and linear range uh, well enough to uh, analyze the late night salivary cortisol and only require less than 10 minutes for from sampling to test resulting. In fact, IKLQ is now uh, commercially available and has been used for POC, POC testing in low source uh, settings. 
Electrochemical immunosensors is based on the principle of measuring the changes in electrical uh, properties induced by electroactive, bio, uh, electroactive uh, redox change due to the absorption of an analyte onto the electrode surface functionalized with antibodies as shown in this figure. The resulting redox potential change was then uh, detected by either the enzyme-linked secondary antibody as shown in figure A in the bottom panel or by label-free redox probe in figure B. Label-free biosensors um, has the advantages of easy preparation, uh, low-cost mass production, and higher sensitivity, and therefore are preferred assay formats. This figure shows you an automatic microfluidic system integrated with electrochemical cortisol immunosensors. As shown in the upper panel of this figure, anti-cortisol antibodies were uh, immobilized onto the disposable gold microelectrodes, which were embedded in the assay chamber of a microfluidic manifold, as shown in the right. And then electrical uh, responses is measured by using cyclic voltometry uh, by interfacing with a miniature uh, potential chip co connected to a microcontroller as shown in the lower panel. The resulting device is ultra sensitive, has a five log linear range, but will require 30 minutes to com complete the entire reaction. The high surface area of nanomaterial uh, provide much more binding site and therefore uh, greatly increase the antibody loading capacity, also decrease the charge transfer resistance of the resulting device. As shown in the cartoon on the upper panel, by using the zinc oxide nanoflakes or nano rod as the immobilization matrix, the nano device uh, has exhibited the equivalently excellent uh, analytical performance as its bulk material counterpart, but offered much higher chemical stability, higher catalytical activity, as well as biocompatibility. But as we all know, antibodies are prone to denaturation and batch-to-batch -batch variations, which restrict the wide application of cortisol immunosensors. Aptomers are single-stranded DNA or RNA, usually 20 to 80 nucleotides in length, and can be obtained by defining the selection process so that they have high affinity and specificity against target analytes. Aptomers has advantages of denaturation resistance, long shelf life, and the little batch-to-batch -batch variability. For cortisol sensing, uh, as shown in the lower panel, a displacement assay was designed so that the aptomer loaded nanoparticles are first occupied by structural analog, triamcinolone, TA for short. When sample is applied to the device, cortisol in the sample uh, displaces TA from the aptomers. The release, the TA, is then electrochemically reduce graphene modified electrodes and give signals for cortisol computation. Such a, a device, when uh, used the nanomaterial, has reported an excellent sensitivity, a wide linear range, and an impressive short reaction time of 2.5 minutes. Unfortunately, Interference was noted at the lower cortisol reference range in the presence of high pro, uh, progesterone concentration. Nevertheless, aptomer-based uh, cortisol biosensors with modification and improvement is uh, called the pro great potential for e using in the POC clinical settings in the near future. 
Ambient ionization and the miniaturization of mass spectrometers are two separate research fields that have been advanced rapidly in the last decade. The integrated ambient ionization uh, miniature MS system represents a major research and the development direction of uh, future MS instrumentation suitable for point of care clinical applications. Ambient ionization refers to direct ionization of analytes from the raw samples in their ambient state without sample extraction or purification. Among many ambient ionization methods already described so far, paper spray ionization is the most developed for quantitating small analytes uh, from complex matrices. As shown in the figure on the top left, samples are loaded to a paper triangle uh, wetted with the appropriate solvent, and a high voltage is then applied to the paper to produce gas phase ion for MS analysis. Extraction spray, uh, as shown in the lower left, is an improved version of paper spray. The paper substrate is inserted into a capillary emitter cartridges made for the ease of mass production and for the compatibility to interface with more types of mass spectrometers. Paper spread ionization achieved most success in drug abuse testing. An example shown in the figure on the right uh, determined uh, simultaneously eight illicit drugs uh, with only 10 micrometer blood within 90 seconds. Next slide. Slug flow micro extraction nano ESI is developed for direct ionization from liquid samples. Uh, a disposable capillary with a pool the tip was used to perform the entire sampling and ionization process as shown in the uh, middle of figure A. Then two liquid plugs are formed by sequentially inject five microliter of organic solvent and the sample urine or blood into capillary. Subsequently, by simply tilting the capillary five times, the internal circulation are formed inside each plug, and that facilitate the transfer of analytes to and away from the liquid-liquid interface, and therefore greatly increase the extraction efficiency. After the extraction, as shown in the figure B, a stainless steel wire then inserted to reach the organic solvent plug, and a high voltage is applied to generate nano ESI for MS analysis. Slug flow micro extraction nano ESI have achieved a successful performance in many toxicology testing. However, ionization efficiency by nano ESI is not great for nonpolar steroid molecules. To address this problem, as shown in figure A on the right, an additional a liquid plug of five microliter of water containing hydroxylamine is inserted uh, between the sample plug and the organic solvent plug to derivatize uh, steroid molecules. This modification greatly improved the signal to noise ratio of the derivatized uh, steroid molecules, as you can see from the spectra in figure C compared to figure B. In order to be light and portable, the miniature MS system is designed with reduced size the pumping system. The resulting decrease in pumping capacity uh, capacity led to the high background noise and uh, uh, loss of sensitivity. Fortunately, the development of discontinuous atmospheric pressure introduction, DEPI technique, allows for post-ion introduction 
which greatly decrease the demand of pumping capacity and still allow adequate numbers of ions being transferred into ion trap mass analyzers for MSMS analysis. Uh, a DAPI equipped Mini 12 MS system, the latest version in the series, as shown in the figures on the upper panel, claims a limit of detection within a 10 times differences uh, from the sophisticated lab scale MS instrument. Therefore, um, many progresses have been made, but more challenges are there to be overcome before the miniature MS system can be used in POC clinical settings. First, due to engineering difficulties, uh, only few ambient ionization method has been adopted to miniature MS system, and there's still room for improvement in ionization efficiency of the system. On the other hand, the disposable sample cartridges, which are essential for easy sample introduction to POC uh, devices, were developed for paper spread and slug flow micro extraction method, as we discussed earlier. Uh, but the biggest challenge of all is to achieve an adequate per, uh, performance mandatory by clinical applications. So far, the method for properly incorporating internal standard in two samples have been achieved and which can enhance the quantitation precision. But interference is still a big issue due to limited chrom chromatography. The possible solution include the use of stable isotope labeled internal standards and most importantly, target analyze specific uh, optimization need to be carried out during ASA development and the subsequent implementation stages. Lastly, significant effort is needed to improve the reproducibility of data generated by miniature MS system, especially when it was used out in the field. The real-time calibration is one of the possible solutions. So in summary, we have discussed the recent advances in the technical development for three types of uh, POC cortisol devices. The first is the LFA lateral flow ASA uh, linked smartphone system, which is current, co uh, currently commercially available and uh, is applied to the uh, source limiting uh, settings. The second type is the label-free biosensors. When used with microfluidic system together with the nanotechnology, have great potential for real-time cortisol monitoring. The third type is the ambient ionization miniature MS system. Although many challenges is still there to be overcome, it will allow direct chemical analysis of unmodified samples in a streamlined procedure, therefore holds the promise of wide clinical application at point care in the future. This concludes my presentation today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Chen, for your presentation. A quick reminder for our audience on how to submit questions. Simply type them into the drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window labeled Ask a Question and click on the Send button. Dr. Chen will answer as many questions as time permits. What measures have been or should be taken by clinical laboratory communities at this moment to minimize the assay variations? This is a good question. Assay standardization is no, more, no small undertaking. It requires national and international efforts and collaboration. But the good proficiency testing programs already played an important role in reducing the variability of testing results among the participating laboratories. The successful approaches has been taken by PT programs such as the UK's 
vitamin D external quality assessment scheme, DECAS, CDC's hormone standardization program, and other CAPPT programs to improve ASA agreement and recently accuracy. For example, by simply using median instead of all laboratory trimming can minimize the effect of our outliers. And also for ASA accuracy, uh, more and more PT programs are using the uh, definitive method, either GCMS or the LC tender mass spec as the standard and uh, calculate the deviations of all the other methods. This measure could identify the ASA drift uh, more easily and thus improve the overall ASA accuracy. Since metric effect is the big issue for steroid measurement, it is important first to use the control made in appropriate metrics with target values assigned by reference measurement procedures to ensure the traceability to the primary reference material. And also, it is recently advocated to participate in so-called accuracy-based PT program if they exist, they exist uh, which use the minimally process the human samples to avoid the matrix effect of the PT material. What should be the criteria used to judge the performance adequacy of a POC cortisol device? This is a very good question, but hard to give a very good answer. And my short answer is it depends on the intended use. Cortisol point of care testing is most likely to be used for initial screen of Cushing's syndrome. And in such a situation, a sensitivity capable of detect lower limit of midnight salivary free cortisol take the priority seat. If used uh, for the rule in, rule out the adrenal hyper or hypo uh, function, then accuracy around the defined cutoff values is also very important. And also, robustness to give consistent results in various environments where the tests are performed is desirable. Uh, in addition, ease of use, fast turnaround time, and the small sample volume are good features for good POC devices. Well, I would like to once again thank Dr. Chen for her presentation. Do you have any final comments? No, thank you. Well, thanks again. I'd also like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. We would like to thank our educational sponsor, Agilent, for today's educational webcast. This webcast can be viewed on demand through September 2018. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.